Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the people's channel, home of the Bit Squad, the greatest and largest crypto community in all of the interwebs. And on this channel, we like to help you guys find financial freedom through crypto assets. Guys, my name is Frankie Candles. I'm going to be your host today, filling in for DZ. Uh, he's on a plane right now, I believe. Uh, but we have a great show for you tonight. Again, welcome to Around the Blockchain, we, where we talk about the hottest crypto stories and topics with your favorite crypto content creators. And today is going to be a good one. We've got in the top left, Justin Rogers. And, <laughs> and on the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then we also have Crypto Keeper, one of our uh, one of the crowd favorites here, uh, as well as Crypto Factor and Hoshoshi. Um, you guys, uh, I'm filling in for DZ. We also have uh, Drew, uh, another member of the Bit Squad over here, filling in for BJ. So it is a uh, a complete uh, celebrity uh, celebrity show tonight. So bear with us on any technical problems. Uh, but guys, tonight we are talking about some really, really good topics. We got Jerome Powell delivering some hawkish news at Jackson Hole. We also have, uh, we're talking about how over 50% of some some exchange trades are considered fake or uh, wash trading. If you guys know what that is, we will get into that uh, in just a moment. And then we are also talking VC fund tokens. What are they? Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to have a great show tonight, guys. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with a little market watch and see what is going on in the markets so we got Bitcoin coming in at $20,681. Obviously, uh, had quite a volatile day today, guys. We were pumping this morning and then uh, obviously dumped off of that Fed uh, speech. Uh, and then we got Ethereum coming in at $15.59, down about 7% on the day. And then Bitcoin down about 3% on the day. Let's go ahead and check our top. Uh, let's check our top losers. Uh, we got Flow down uh, about 11% on the day. Uniswap down about 10% on the day. DCR down 10%. And Cosmos, uh, actually one of my uh, one of my favorites, down about 7% on the day. Uh, but guys, let's go ahead and jump into our first topic. And that is going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about Jerome Powell delivering this hawkish news. Now, uh, crypto prices swung uh, as Fed Chair Powell spoke about inflation, and uh, you know, crypto rose in uh, you know an hour, about an hour before uh, this. You know, Powell got on, and then uh, you know we saw a lot of volatility. We kind of pumped up, and then we absolutely ate all of those gains back up and dumped, uh, and then kept continuing down. Uh, so uh, pretty pretty intense day, especially for someone like me who's uh, trading the charts constantly. Uh, always fun to have these super super volatile days. Uh, but I'm going to start it off with you, Keeper. Uh, now. Powell stated that the next hike will be based on September economic data. Uh, are you expecting a rate hike to be higher or lower than uh, 75 basis points? What are you thinking? Mm. Uh, thanks for having me on the show again, guys. As always, I'm out here in Las Vegas. We've got uh, the NFT event going on, so super excited about that. Uh, you know, I'm thinking 75 basis points is probably what they're going to do, but they are taking a stance that says, hey, you know what, we've got to get this inflation under control. The funny thing is, is I talk about this a lot. They've known the whole time what the problem that they were causing. So they knew when they started printing money mercilessly, just tossing money everywhere, spend, send money to Ukraine, wherever you got to send it, we'll just print it. It's a never ending slush fund. Keep it going. They knew that they were going to have to do this. They knew that interest rates were going to rise. This is not some surprise. They have these little meetings and they act as if they're all, oh, you know, I, I, I just I really didn't expect things to be as bad as they are now. Oh, baloney. You absolutely knew where you were, where we were headed with this. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it higher. But they also are trying to play a game of teeter-totter here where they're saying, OK, we've got we, 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 we push up the rates too high and we're really going to crush the market and we keep things too low and we're going to get the opposite effect. So we'll, we'll see where they end up. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it about the same. Yeah, I, I would probably have to agree with you there. Um, but we will we're we're gonna have to wait and see. You know, sometimes we get uh, surprised at these meetings. And I, you know, like I said, as a uh, as a trader, I said this before. Uh, last time I hosted ATB, I typically don't trade. Uh, anytime we have some kind of crazy meeting or news coming out, uh, I like to kind of sit on the sidelines there. I'm a little bit more of a conservative trader. I do, you know, I am trading all the time, but uh, not all traders are complete degens, guys. Uh, so I sit out, let the volatility, uh, you know, happen because you know today you might have been ready for that long, and then you would have just gotten dumped on. Um, but now I want to throw it over to you, Hashoshi. 
Uh, now, during the speech, obviously, we did see price start to dump. Uh, I'm just curious, what, what do you think uh, you know, price action is going to kind of look like leading up to the next meeting? Do you think we're going to continue to see volatility, or do you think things are going to, you know, the seas are going to kind of calm down uh, until, you know, the calm before the uh, storm, so to speak? I mean, I would say if we look at, at the previous uh, events here, we look at the previous rate hikes, we kind of know it's a known commodity. I agree with Keeper that I think we're probably going to see 75 basis points. I think a lot of what drove the markets upward ahead of this Jackson Hole speech was a little bit of, uh, of denial and people thinking that because we saw what we think is CPI numbers or inflation numbers peaking uh, just recently, that the Fed was going to back off on rate hikes and the central bank in Europe is going to do the same thing. And then in reality, that's not the case. So very likely what we're going to see is continued volatility up and through that basis point uh, rate hike, 75 basis points is the likely event. And then from there, we may recover a little bit after that as people start to stop freaking out afterwards. So mm -hmm. it's it's usually a, uh, a choppy period in the wake of all these rate hikes. And then up until the next meeting, we'll probably have price rolling back up as people forget about the pain and, <laughs> and worry that comes with it. Absolutely. I, I would definitely have to agree with you there. Uh, now, Justin, I want to throw it over to you next. Now, uh, you know, with, uh, will do you think the new funding that was recently passed by Congress, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, do you think this is going to help or hurt the efforts uh, to try to, you know, control all this inflation? Yeah, when I saw that, I, th I think it's pretty clear to me that it almost seems as if there's some sort of force that's just trying to bring everything down. Like when you see Jerome Powell come out there and he's talking about fighting inflation, and then you see that Biden's coming out here trying to like just forgive student loans at such an insane rate. It's just just such conflicting issues there. I just can't really wrap my head around it at all. It just seems like it's just mass confusion to me of what's going on. It just seems clear to me that I think they need to be a little more aggressive with the rate hikes, bring the pain as soon as possible instead of letting it linger. But um, I'm not super familiar with macroeconomics, things like that. It's just kind of my speculative opinion. But uh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I would agree. I'm not as much of a macroeconomist as much as I am a trader. But I do have one question for you, Justin. Are those NFTs on your wall? <laughs> Those are little drawings for my for my daughters. That's kind of uh, maybe a future NFT artist in the making. But um, that's kind of what I love to uh, store in my little office here. I love it. I love it. You got to and, you know, getting the, getting the youngins uh, involved in crypto early, I think is important. Uh, but <laughs> absolutely love it. Uh, now, Factor, throwing it over to you. Now, uh, obviously, many economists th uh, believe that, uh, you know, we've kind of seen the peak of inflation here. Uh, do you tend to agree with this or do you kind of think they're just they've got no idea what's going on? Or, or do you think we've kind of seen the worst here, uh, you know, as far as inflation goes? Well, it's funny because economists are a unique type of person because most of the time they're wrong. Um, and I'm not saying they're wrong in this case. What I am saying is um, we don't really know. Um, I don't think it's going to be the peak of inflation. I really don't. I do believe that the next, um, the, the, the rate the rate hike that's going to happen is going to be priced in. I was actually looking at the uh, charts since you're into technical analysis and a trader. Uh, I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. If you notice, there's a, there was a sending triangle for a while. And this ascending triangle is, is actually quite bearish because the they're not overlapping. The, uh, the And I recently learned them, by the way, there's, there's different types of ascend, ascending triangles. So you live and learn. Um, but they're not overlapping each other. They're, they're overlapping each other, excuse me. And it's quite bearish. Now, if it breaks down, it could surprise us and break back up real quick. And I think this is going to be priced in and midterms are coming up. So that's why they're going to, that's why they're printing money. I think they're going to print more money because it's not just about balancing the economy and the inflation. It's about balancing those votes. So anything goes right now. And um, I, get, I, I guess we have to wait and see. Absolutely. I, I, I do think it is possible that it could potentially be baked in. Um, so so I definitely I definitely agree with you. Uh, now, keeping it moving here, we're trying to stay on schedule here. Sometimes we've run over. Uh, but moving on to our next topic, and that is, uh, you know, over 50% of all Bitcoin trades on exchanges are fake. 
um, or at least certain exchanges. Now, this is due to something called wash trading. If you guys are not familiar uh, with what wash trading is, essentially, it's uh, essentially you're faking volume in a way by buying and selling uh, the same asset uh, or you know same financial instrument. Uh, just kind of making fake volume there. And uh, they're saying, so, uh, you know, according to a recent report by Forbes, uh, analysts invest investigating 157 cryptocurrency exchanges came to the conclusion that around 51% of daily trade activity recorded for Bitcoin on exchanges is probably fake. Uh, now, this is, a, uh, this is a pretty crazy number, in my opinion. You know, I read this, uh, you know, so some exchanges on this list are uh, you know exchanges like uh, MEXC Global uh, and actually Binance and Bybit also on this list. So uh, you know Bi Binance, you know this is a you know, Binance, Binance US. This is exchanges that uh, you know a lot of people use. Obviously, this is referring to the Binance non-US. Um, but uh, I'm going to throw it to you, Keeper, first. Uh, now you know some of the names listed on this report were non-US exchanges. Uh, you know, will stories like this be used to keep foreign exchanges out of the US? What do you think? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I think that uh, I think that this is this is probably not a great question for me, honestly, but I'll, I'll go with it. I think that that ultimately the U.S. is going to try to do anything they can to stifle innovation in the crypto space. And I think that if they have something to point at and say, this is bad, this is bad. They're doing things that are that are wrong. They're doing this. You know, they're 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 working through things illegally and they can push people away. I think that they might try, but at the same time, in the same breath, as our legacy financial system comes into play, like more and more into crypto, I think they're realizing that there's a huge opportunity here. And the opportunity is to make money, which if we look at, you know, let's just say this 51% is true, okay? These exchanges are all competing for your business. They're competing, they're saying, hey, Frankie Candles got some trading volume going on, everybody watching him. I want him and I want his people trading on my platform. So what do they do? They try to show as much liquidity as possible so that you can get in and out of your trades. And I think part of the thing that's happening here is technology. Technology has made it so that they're able to write these scripts. These computers are able to come in, make these micro transactions that at the end of the day, don't make much of a, a change. And if anything, maybe a little bit of a positive change, maybe a little bit of a, a negative, but it ultimately shows that the exchange is super liquid and then they're able to offer out things. I hate to let the cat out of the bag, but you know, the, the influencers make some money on, you know, giving you their, 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 their code or their key right off of the mm -hmm. trading volume. And so ultimately it's saying, Hey, come to us. It's all about that, that, that notoriety and saying we are the place to trade because they make a ton of money off of you losing just like here in Vegas, the house always wins. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Gotcha. And yeah, you know, uh, it's it, it is incredible to see you know an exchange like Binance you know whether this is a, a very very shady thing that they're doing or just kind of something that's happening. Um, it is insane. Some of those names, like I said, I, I was pretty shocked to see something like Binance or uh, you know even Bybit on yeah. uh, you know on, on the list like that. Uh, now, Hoshoshi, I want to throw it over to you. Uh, you know, if in fact this is accurate information with all these exchanges, uh, you know, ha having a lot of wash trading going on, do you think this is going to have a negative impact uh, on Bitcoin as a whole? Or do you think it's just something that, you know, kind of just reflects the exchanges more? Listen, I don't think this has any real impact on Bitcoin, the asset or Bitcoin core, the network, as much as it does have an impact on the markets around it. And I don't really think it's all that surprising, frankly, that something like this has come you know, come to the fore and people are concerned about this. I think it's pretty clear that this has been happening for a while. Wash trading, trying to, like Keeper said, drive people to come and join this new and upcoming exchange. Because if I'm creating an exchange and I'm thinking, what's going to attract people to come here? What is going to allow me to get a foothold in this very saturated area? It's going to be trading volume, favorable terms, low fees, all things that you really need uh, good metrics to drive traders to come and, and capture. So the reality is whether or not 51% or 50, however many 50% it was, the reality is that we have to do two things. We have to look at this and take it with a grain of salt because this is a study that we need to know more about. Uh, they said could be. So there's a little bit of language there that says, it could be fake, but we're not sure. Uh, 
So mm -hmm. I really want to take some time and, and look into the, the method that went into evaluating this, how much was on chain versus off chain research, and really dive into the details. Um, so this is going to be something that we see more and more of as the big players come into the space in the United States and in other areas of the world, and then regulators take more and more interest. At the end of the day, uh, the, the retail trader is usually the one at the bottom of the barrel or the bottom of the stack. And so we really need to figure this out and figure out where the, who the trusted players are who deserve business. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's kind of why I'm saying, you know, if it turns out to be true, because uh, I'm actually, like you said, I'm interested to see, you know, exactly how they got this information, you know, uh, what kind of research were they doing? Um, and just really how accurate is it? Uh, and then on that note, uh, throwing it over to you, Justin. Uh, now, do you think it's, uh, it's more likely for the powers that be to come up with a universal regulatory framework um, you know, for, for all exchanges? Or do you think that like just the certain exchanges that might be showing, you know, that they're doing maybe something a little bit shady, do you think they're going to go after those exchanges and, you know, try to keep them out of certain parts of the world? Or do you think it's just going to be one big uh, kind of blanket regulation that's going to go over? Honestly, I really have no idea what their plan is to uh, regulate these exchanges. Like I, as much as I've been reading the documentation, I've been reading it's hard for me to understand their plan or even if they understand even crypto in general at all from a regulatory standpoint of what these exchanges even need in terms of the wash trading like um yeah to be honest i just don't i don't really have a clue how to answer the question my my uh, maybe here's a funny story that i can interject for entertainment value my uh, experience in trading as right now is i just figured out what uh longing and shorting was so i've only been nice. in bitcoin for about a year and a half and uh, I ended up doing some 20x leverage. I used about 10 grand. And I was just trying to fool around and have fun. And I lost it all within basically like two hours. It was crazy. So oh, that's no. kind of my trading experience. I'm like the worst guy to listen to of anything trading. I'm more <laughs> of a music NFT specialist is kind of my thing. But um, yeah, I just I want to basically tell everybody probably don't listen to me for any trading advice whatsoever. <laughs> well, got you. Definitely appreciate the honesty. If you guys do want to learn about trading, you can go ahead and follow my YouTube channel, Frankie Candles. Shameless plug there. Uh, but actually hit 25,000 subscribers uh, today. So super excited about that. Um, but let's moving go. on. <laughs> let's go, baby. Uh, moving on here. Uh, Factor, going to throw it over to you. Uh, now, do you think, d does this port, uh, you know, l lend uh, credence to the SBF's claim to other exchange, uh, claim the other exchanges could be insolvent. All right, so um, it's, it, this is actually, actually interesting uh, because not only I, did I used to work as a head of marketing to a fully regulated and licensed crypto exchange in Europe, I, I've also been the CMO of various companies back even in the ICO days. So first of all, I guarantee you there's wash trading. Uh, we didn't do it at, point, at, at the company I was working for, of course. It, it was fully legit, but, but we know that a lot of uh, exchanges do that. But there's also a lot of, um, how can I put this? When I was working as a CMO in, in various companies, now I didn't agree with this, but I understood why they did it. There's even people you hire so they can give you volume and show volume on exchanges. And yes, it's microtransactions. And yes, this is being done, especially with smaller projects. Now, I don't, I don't see why they would do this on, on Bitcoin. Now, maybe um, the, uh, the actual um, the, the stats or the, what they found was on, wasn't on Bitcoin at all. Maybe it's on other cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, on other projects. We don't know that. As Hashtoshi um, very correctly stated, we have to see these studies. But I guarantee you it's going on. And I guarantee you it's going on by many exchanges. And yes, it can be used to start putting exchanges in check. And you know what? I, I think they have to. Not yeah. totally your opinion, but <laughs> yeah. I know no. you're mad at no. me right now. But listen, coming from somebody that works in the industry, it, 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 was, it has to. <laughs> like, well, you have to. And there's places well, you can trade where you know it's safer. <laughs> uh, can I interject on that? Absolutely. Because yeah, of course. When we think about a lot of the things that people in this space, let's say the average crypto investor, they might they're a retail investor. They feel you know, I've been stepped on in the equities markets. I'm a small fish. I can't compete. Crypto is an opportunity for me to get mine, me to make my money and have opportunities, right? If you have all these exchanges that are pulling people in with influencers and, and high value, maybe you got VCs in the mix. Is that really 
running in line with that idea that the retail trader should be empowered or is it just another way to profiteer off the retail trader so people who say oh all regulation is bad all rules are bad i mean that kind of runs counter to the idea that the retail investor should have opportunities it's when exactly. regulation is taken too far or done in a way that is yeah. uh, completely uneducated and completely unaware of the environment you're in so i always say you know people can hate me or Factor or whoever else that says, oh, there needs to be regulation here or regulation is okay. But to an extent, it's for the betterment of the retail investor when done properly. That's the key. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. I agree completely. Yeah, I, I would also agree with that too. You know, uh, I, I talk about this a lot. You know, I, I think anytime anybody mentions regulation at all, especially in the crypto community, it's kind of like, uh, you know, people get attacked. It's like, you know, you can't say that word. But, you know, in in my opinion, obviously, you know, some form of, uh, you know, regulation, like you said, a show she went done right is, you know, in my opinion, almost necessary, right? Yeah, you do have to protect investors to some degree. It's that overstep that is really, uh, you know, when things start to get ugly. Hey, can I make uh, a funny comparison? Yeah, of course. Thinking, think about going to a nightclub or a bar that's not regulated or being checked on, let's put it that way, and they're serving you really bad drinks that can make you go blind. And this is, has happened, by the way, because they're fake drinks. Well, the regulation is needed or, 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 or sort of checks are needed there because they could poison you, right? Well, it's the same thing with exchanges and so on. They, they literally could take advantage of you and kill, well, not kill you, but maybe kill you financially. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to add, it's a, it's a bit of a weird example, but think about it. Certain places need to be checked on. They need to be regulated. They need to be in control somewhat degree. Um, and just like I would like them to check what I drink at the bar, I would really like them to check where I'm trading. I love that comparison. Uh, it's like uh, it, always peer to peer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it to totally makes sense. I 100% I, I agree with you. Um, but moving on to our next topic, guys, uh, you know, and it, we're going to be talking about asset managers offering fund tokens. Now, uh, you know, of course, according to a recent article by Reuters, uh, you know, asset managers are planning to leverage blockchain tech to divide money into bite-sized units or tokens to sell to tiny savers. So, uh, you know, they, they're doing this to basically, uh, you know, make it a little bit easier to uh, make e-liquid assets a little bit easier to move around. And, uh, you know, with, with that being said, I'm going to jump right into the questions here, going straight to you, Keeper. Um, you know, are VCs buying into, uh, are VCs buying into crypto? Uh, do they have better control over the markets or do the benefits of blockchain far outweigh the risks at this point? Or is it kind of both, uh, you know, both scenarios there? Uh, re Phrase the question for me, Craig. <laughs> uh, yes. So, are VCs buying into crypto? Ha the, the the question is worded a little bit strangely. Um, do the benefits how do the benefits of blockchain out far outweigh the risks at this point? I think what the question is asking. Okay. Did you, are you getting? I, I I think basically what the question is asking is, are the VCs buying into Crypto to have better control over the markets, or do the benefits of blockchain outweigh the risks mm -hmm. at this point, or both? It's it's okay. a very weirdly uh, worded I'll, question. I'll, I'll... That's right. I'll roll with it. The, the venture <laughs> capitalists are are in crypto for the same reason that they're in anything else, right? They they are they see opportunity. They see opportunity splashed all over the place, and they say, "Hey, I need to get my my hands in that." And so I totally understand, you know, wanting to be involved in that. I think. As always, the retail traders we've been talking about today is the, it's like, they're the last person that's thought about, but they're the person that's taken the most advantage of. And so I, part of me really likes tokenizing funds like this because there's going to be instances where I might want to get involved in something, but there is a cap and I have to be at least a million or $10 million in to be able to invest in this fund. And maybe the fund is really lucrative. But if me and a thousand of my other retail trading buddies are able to, you know, to, they tokenize and are able to put our small amounts of money together and put that together, listen, 10% on my $100 is still 10%, right? Mm -hmm. And so ultimately that's a great return. And so I think that there's opportunity there. And I think the, VC, the venture capitalists are seeing, well, wait a minute. Now I don't only have to go after the whales. 
we can actually go after the retail traders by doing this. So I think it gives them even more opportunity. And I think blockchain is, 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 is great for a number of reasons. And one of them is transparency. They're going to be able to show, like, you're going to be able to check on chain. It's tr trust, but verify, right? The people are going to be able to look on chain and see what's happening, the amount of transactions, the amount of volume, see what's happening. Uh, albeit maybe some of it might be uh, wash trading as we've been talking <laughs> about. Um, and so, so yeah, so I think the, the venture capitalists are saying, hey, here's another opportunity. So now we can have all the whales over here and I can also take a whole bunch of minnows, put them together and make another whale. So I think it's hugely beneficial. I don't think that it's too risky to, to be doing. I think it ultimately gives more people opportunity. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, and uh, great job making sense of that question. That was that was what the question was asking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, it is. It was. I think it's just all typos. Uh, but moving on to Hashoshi uh, now, with VCs, you know, starting to uh, tokenize their offerings. Do you think this could potentially be the beginning? And you know, I'm curious about this personally. Uh, you know, do you think this could be potentially the beginning of the end for the traditional stock market? I mean, it's very possible. I still think that there's so much value and so many established funds and just players and infrastructure invested in the traditional way of trading equities and trading in the stock market. So I don't think we're going to see that fully go away. What this is going to be is an alternative, kind of like Keeper said, for the average retail investor to get access to funds that they otherwise would not have access to. So people who are interested in um, you know, index funds today. This is just another vehicle that I think will be one of the next hot investment sectors for people that want broad access to different early stage companies potentially, or different mid-sized companies, or even different assets, baskets of assets. At the end of the day, I think one of the biggest things that people need to think about though is where is the alignment of incentives? The alignment of incentives here theoretically is that the retail investor gets access to in small chunks, uh, potentially lucrative investment opportunities that they would otherwise not have. These venture capitalists and fund managers, they also get something in return. Frankly, I think that they get more in return than what the retail investor is getting because they can now fill up a, uh, they could capitalize a fund much more easily with retail investors who do not have the tools to do the type of due diligence that the whales and the more sophisticated players would do. So you're going to probably see some bad actors out there, some people who may not be totally honest trying to shop funds around and maybe less sophisticated players trying to fill funds primarily through retail. So I would just say when this stuff starts to happen, expect a regulatory response and also expect to take a little bit of extra time doing your due diligence, much like you do in crypto, because not everything is going to be of high quality. That would be my thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. The the due, due diligence in something like crypto is, you know, I preach this on my channel all the time. Like, guys, do mm -hmm. your research. Something can seem amazing. Um, I tell them specifically with gaming coins, uh, you know, just that I mean, this is kind of unrelated. But, you know, when you invest in gaming coins, people are seeing these crazy, uh, you know, 4K trailers of gameplay, but it's really just a 3D rendered animation. It, there's no actual gameplay. There's nothing <laughs> even in development, you know, with the exception yeah. of the good projects. But that's why you got to do your due diligence. So, uh, you know, I, I got to agree with you there. Uh, now, uh, Factor, I'm going to throw it back to you. Uh, now, will regulators or do you think regulators will allow retail to buy into these fund tokens or will the accredited investor rule still apply? A very good question, actually. Well, in the beginning, I think you're going to be able to until they stop it. If, if I'm not mistaken, these um, the, the, the way this is going to work, uh, they're going to put those out. And then people can buy in and then basically we'll see what happens in six months, a year or two. I might be wrong here, but um, with any usually new products just come out. Now, unless there's some sort of underlying thing I'm missing, maybe there's licenses involved and so on. But I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about this for various reasons. Um, number one, I would like to crack at it. I would, I would really like to get into some of these. Um, number two, I'm wondering if technical analysis would, would work on this, which it probably will. Fun story. Uh, TA works on almost anything. And Frankie, Frank, you should know this, man, but, but i got to say this. People will be surprised what, what they could do if they learn a little bit of TA. Mm -hmm. When I was training a sales team, uh, when I was mentoring and coaching a telecommunication company, I actually did TA on the reps. And I did, did this an experiment to see which sales reps will do well and which won't. And it actually gave me a pretty actual, accurate prediction of who does well and who doesn't. 
So I'm excited about um, doing TA on some of these funds, seeing how it works out. Um, as for due diligence, as for doing your own research, two problems with that. Um, number one, most people don't know how and they can't learn because there's no guides out there. So if anybody's watching this and has a YouTube channel, maybe they should start making guides. More guides are needed. I'm sure there's some out there. I have one on my, can my, my channel as well using a Vrint score. And number two, and it's going to sound harsh, most people are idiots and they can't do their own research. So when people say do your own research, um, maybe they should add learn how to do your re own research to mm -hmm. that statement and that will keep you a lot safer. Absolutely. Uh, and I love that you are doing TA on your sales reps, trying to find those low yeah. cap salesmen. I it's like crazy. it. Uh, yeah, it, it is funny. Uh, it, it, it is worked. just, it, I'm, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. People like it to worked. say TA doesn't work, but if it works on uh, uh, you know, sales reps, it's got to work on crypto, right? Um, I, would, I actually, somebody that was going to get fired, we, I actually saved them and they actually did very well because I said, look at this, blah, 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 blah. And we gave them another chance. Were they in an, in a massive ascending triangle is the question. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, so now, uh, Justin, I want to throw it over to you uh, for the last, say it again. Oh, we lost him. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, that is actually going to wrap it up for tonight's episode, guys. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, who is our winner? We have... Uh, Keeper, Crypto Keeper as our winner. So you are the reigning champ. So <laughs> take it away and, uh, you know, for about 30 seconds, tell the people what they need to hear. He's muted. I think you're muted, Keeper. Yep, that yeah. might help. The first thing you need to know is push the mute button and then allow you to speak. Now, make, make sure that you follow everybody on, on, the, uh, on, on the show here today. They've got great share. Uh, I will say we have Danger Close Alpha. We mint tonight at midnight. Super, super excited about that. We have a bug out drop. It's 0.1 ETH. Go to DangerCloseAlpha.com. You're going to get a three-day in real life prepper boot camp. Uh, we've got a, a, an ARG an alternate reality game going there. We've gamified the whole thing. We've got a lot going on there. So dangerclosealpha.com. That's tonight at midnight. Uh, make sure that you jump into the Discord, get the info. So I look forward to seeing you there. There you go. Danger Close Alpha, guys. Go check that out. And don't forget to check the links in the description down below to follow all of our guests. They make some really, really good content. And also, before I let you guys go, uh, Frankie Candles will be live right after this stream. Uh, you just got to give me a couple minutes to run downstairs and get everything up and running. But uh, I will be going live. So uh, if anybody wants to check out, you know, what the markets are doing on the charts, uh, definitely come check us out. And with all that being said, thank you to all our guests. That's all we got for tonight. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow or on Monday. Frankie Candles out.